Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the meeting to order. All members of committee are here this evening with the exception of Councillor Sprovieri and Councillor Miles. I know Councillor Miles is other municipal business. I'm not sure about Councillor uh, Sprovieri's uh, personal matter this evening. Councillor Fertini, could I have your attention, please? Thank you. There are no changes to the agenda this evening as printed from the clerk's office. Um, with this evening's technology, you'll have to put your hand up and signal if you wish to. Councillor Pileshi and Councillor Gibson. Councillor Pileshi. Thank you. Madam Chair, um, I'd like to add a discussion item with respect to the Royal Cliff application at 100 Conestoga Boulevard in Ward 2. 9.1. Thank you. Councillor Pelushi. Councillor Gibson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to add, I'm assuming it's going to be 9.2. I had it down 9.1, but Councillor Pelushi beat me. Um, 164 and 166 Main Street North. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Gibson, would you like to move the agenda as printed? I'd love to. Thank you. All in favor? That's carried. If I could remind everybody this evening to put your cellular devices on an inaudible mode, as well as members of council, if you could do the same thing, it would be appreciated. Are there any declarations of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none. There are four items in consent this evening. Are there any changes to the consent agenda? Seeing none. Councillor Fertini, would you like to move the consent agenda? I do. All those in favor? That's carried. Uh, members of the public who are here this evening, we've now moved to the statutory public meeting reports. This is a public meeting of the Planning and Development Committee held in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act of Ontario. The proposals to be heard at this public meeting are the result of an application made to the city under the Planning Act. This is not a proposal from the City of Brampton. The intent of this public meeting is to hear submissions from the applicant and the public regarding this proposal. Members of the committee may ask for questions of clarification only, but will not engage in debate on the proposal at this time. Committee consideration of the proposal will occur at a future meeting when planning staff bring forward the final recommendation report on the proposal. The city has also posted to its website at www.brampton.ca all of the supporting information and documentation for this current development application for public review and reference. We'll now proceed to consider the item 4.1 on the statutory public meeting. It is an application to amend the official plan, the zoning bylaw and proposed draft plan of subdivision. The applicant owner is KLM Planning Partners on behalf of Coppertail Estates Incorporated at 1403 Queen Street West, east of Credit View Road and south of Queen Street in Ward 4. The planning file is C03W05.021. Is anyone in attendance this evening who wishes to hear a submission from the applicant and presentation from city staff regarding this proposal this evening. It just signaled to me, if you could put your hands up if you're interested in seeing a presentation on the part of the applicant and staff. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll now at this point, you're, you're gonna have to bear with me. We've got a new process that we have to follow <laughs> um, under the new legislation. So. It's a little more scripted than it has been in the past. So I'll ask the applicant if you'd like to come forward and make a submission. And presenting on behalf of the applicant is Ryan Minolihan from KLM Planning Partners Incorporated. And I hope I spelled, pronounced your last name correctly. You did, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. You can go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of committee. My name is Ryan Mino. I'm a land use planner and partner with KLM Planning Partners, Inc. And I'm here before you this evening on behalf of Copper Trails Estate, Inc., the owner of lands situated at 1403 Queen Street West. 
The purpose of the application before you this evening is to receive comments from the public in response to an official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and draft plan of subdivision to facilitate the development of 50 uh, freehold townhouses on the subject lands accessed by a common element condominium roadway. Subject lands are situated on the south side of Queen Street West, located east of Credit V Road, west of James Potter Road, and north of two tributaries of the Springbrook Creek. As I mentioned previously, the units will face a new condominium road with access provided to the condominium road from Queen Street West. Each unit will, will have two parking spaces and 13 visitor parking spaces are provided at the south end of the property. There is also an, an amenity area provided at the south end of the property as well, 524 square meters in size. Um, the units will be approximately anywhere from 1,800 to 2,400 square feet in size, three stories high with a modern architecture. Uh, there's a range of uh, uh, unit widths provided within the development, predominantly 5.5 meters wide or 18 feet. Um, and there's some units closer to the bottom end that are a bit wider to accommodate the tapering of the, of the site uh, at the back end of the property. Um, as you will hear from the planner, uh, the OP does permit residential uses and the secondary plan does permit townhouses as well. The official plan amendment is required to address the increase in density. So the secondary plan designates the property low, low rise residential two and it increases the, we're proposing to increase the density from, four, uh, from 28 units per net residential hectare to 46.1 units per net residential hectare. And that the other purpose of the application is to amend the zoning bylaw from its current zo uh, agricultural zoning to a, an appropriate residential zoning to facilitate the townhouses in addition to the provision of, a, an, a, of an appropriate open space zone category that surrounds the property on all three sides to account for the existing Springbrook Creek and the setbacks and buffers that are required from the creek and the endangered species located within there. Uh, at this time, I'd like to pass over the presentation to the planner of the city, Kevin Freeman. Sorry, presenting on behalf of the city is Kevin Freeman. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, committee members, and members of the public. My name is Kevin Freeman, and I'm the development planner responsible for managing the review of this application to permit a condominium townhouse development consisting of 50 units. So today, I'll be giving a brief overview of the policy context, followed by the next steps for this application moving forward. The property is designated residential in the official plan, which permits a broad range of housing, ranging from assisted housing to upscale executive housing types. The proposal is consistent with residential land use designation in the official plan, and as such, an official plan amendment is not required. The property is designated low density two residential in the Credit Valley secondary plan, which permits single detached, semi-detached, and townhouse structure types at a maximum combined density of 28 units per net residential hectare. Any proposal for a townhouse development within the low density two residential designation shall have regard for the achievement of acceptable transition and physical integration with lower density forms of development and separation and buffering from major roads and other noise sources. While the secondary plan designation permits townhouse structure types, the proposed townhouse development has a density of 46.1 units per net residential hectare, which exceeds the maximum density permissions of the low density two residential designation. As such, an amendment to the secondary plan is required to accommodate the proposed density of the development. The property is shown as residential and open space on the approved Credit Valley block plan. The approved Credit Valley block plan also shows that the property would be developed with a 17 meter wide cul-de-sac and that the access to Queen Street West is subject to further review. Although the, the proposed development does not include a public street as shown on the approved block plan, an amendment to the block plan is not required. The property is currently zoned agricultural. Um, an amendment to the zoning bylaw is required to rezone the lands to facilitate the proposed townhouse development. Moving forward, I will continue to process the application and will be considering all comments received from both the public and technical experts. The application will be reviewed for consistency with the provincial policy statement, conformity with the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and the regional official plan. At a future time, I will be preparing a recommendation report for consideration of the Planning and Development Committee and Council. The report will include a discussion on any comments or questions that are received from the public. All members of the public that provide their contact information for this application will be advised when the future recommendation report will be presented. Thank you, Madam Chair.
Thank you very much, Ryan and uh, Kevin. At this time, I'd like to invite any members of the public in attendance this evening to come forward and make some comments. I'll first ask you to sign uh, in with Risha, and you'll have five minutes to make your presentation and make your comments. Does anybody wish to come forward? Had all your questions answered at the uh, pre-consul or at the uh, marketplace? Okay, would you like to come forward? I'll just ask you to sign in. If anybody else wishes or thinks that they would like to speak, if you could just sign in while this gentleman is speaking, it would be appreciated. Speed things up a little bit. Welcome, and if I could ask you to state your name for the public record, and you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. My name is Abdi Kareem Muhammad. I'm a resident in that area, Credit View uh, and, and Queen Street. Um, there, uh, in the introduction here, the two gentlemen who spoke, they mentioned about uh, the restricted density at uh, 28 units per hectare. Um, and the proposal now talks about 46.1 units uh, per hectare. Um, so the, the one area that's not quite clear to me is, as a public, what's our role here? Um, just to listen um, what's being proposed or to give some ideas. Do we have the authority to object certain resolutions? Uh, what's our role? Thank well, you. I can let staff speak further, but okay. the purpose of the statutory public meeting is so that all members of the public who have an opinion or comments on the application can come forward and make those comments. They are captured as part of the uh, public meeting and every comment and every recommendation that comes from the community needs to be responded to in the final staff report. But I can let, I'm sure there's a more legal way <laughs> to, uh, to express that, um, but I can let staff elaborate. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, with, with respect to tonight's public meeting, yes, uh, we, we are asking that any member of the public that does have an, a, an opinion that they'd like to voice as it relates to this application, that they do come forward and, and share that with staff, uh, which might relate to elements of the proposal that you are very appreciative and that, uh, that you would like to uh, voice your appreciation on, or it might be uh, if it is that you have concerns on various portions of the development as well, we would like to understand understand that. So, you know, the uh, Madam Chair is correct in saying that staff will be, you know, contemplating, you know, all of the technical matters as it relates to the application as we go forward in the processing of it, uh, including having respect or having the consideration uh, for all of the matters that are coming forward from the community as well uh, with your opinions. We'll be looking at all those matters. We'll be responding to all questions that are posed at tonight's meeting uh, within a future staff recommendation report. Uh, we'll be uh, speaking and responding to, uh, if not posed as a question, but rather just as a concern, we'll be addressing all those matters uh, in a future recommendation report as well. So members of the public that are submitting their uh, their names and contact information to the city today and in speaking to the city uh, will also uh, be reserving their right for a potential uh, appeal opportunity at a later point in time as well. Thank you. And you may have heard me mention when I introduced the statutory public meeting portion of, t of tonight's meeting that all of the reports that are submitted will be available for members of the public to review on the website. That is something new uh, that the city has introduced in response to the new legislation. So any traffic study reports, environmental reports, all of those will be available for you to review uh, in their entirety. One more? Thanks. Alan. 
just to, just to add for everyone so that we, we do have some clarity with uh, the members of the public just in understanding uh, really how, as how things will unfold going forward. If it is that uh, members of the public want to speak with staff further uh, beyond really making some statements on the application tonight, but uh, would like to phone, uh, write, email through to staff assigned with this application to understand further uh, information relating to it and voice some thoughts on it at a later point in time, that can be received as well. But those uh, comments really do need to be received in advance of staff coming forward with a, with a recommendation on the matter. Thank you. Our next delegation, if you could state your name for the record, please. Sure. My name is Kunal Moda, and I'm representing the neighborhood, which is uh, mostly near Queen Street and uh, James Potter. So we have uh, a few of my colleagues over here, and a uh, few of the concerns which we think we want to raise uh, to the city. Uh, one of the main thing I would say is uh, we live on, a, um, on the backside of the ravine, and uh, it's a, it's a wildlife area, which we see a lot of coyotes, we see a lot of deers there, and we personally feel that's gonna be impacted a lot, uh, especially once the houses are built, because it's gonna get more crowded over there. So that's one of our concerns. We see it over there uh, with animals coming. We don't see them coming anymore, we expect that. Uh, second concern which we see from our side is uh, the schools are gonna get crowded more because the schools which are there in that neighborhood area which are already um, there's a, quite a population in the school area, and we expect that's going to get bigger with more kids or with 50 houses coming there, and it's going to get more crowded. Uh, the third concern we have from our side is uh, a lot of us who live in um, that ravine area has paid a premium price for getting at lots. And uh, uh, the reason for getting that, one of the reasons was the kids get fresh air, and we wanted to enjoy that uh, ravine area and getting the, a neighborhood which is not too crowded, right? And I think I'm that's obviously gonna impact uh, for uh, our houses, it's gonna impact on our kids. And uh, the lastly, what we think is um, arrival of this all these townhouses is gonna make it very concentrated area on there where it's gonna get built. So Thank these are the concerns much. I'm pre presenting from my team. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. So seeing no, f I have one more speaker. If you could sign in, please. Welcome. Good evening, uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, and uh, good evening to everybody here. I live in the same neighborhood. Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually a neighbor to this gentleman who just spoke. Uh, this is just an opinion. If you look at the, the intersection from Queens uh, and Chinkakosi to Miss Saga Road and Queen, as it stands now, <clears throat> there are three traffic lights, one on James Potter, Credit View, and a new one on Elban Merkel. So the set property coming with 50 townhouses right across the street, there is also a fairly decent size uh, daycare center, if I may. It's, it's not very small. So more or less, <clears throat> there will be, and the Angel Gate Road where we live right now, it's also a pretty uh, <clears throat> problem with respect to uh, safety, just because uh, the traffic has increased significantly on Angel Gate Road as well as the Queen. So I'm pretty sure we will be putting in a request to have a traffic light there. Add to that, you will also have something with this size, 50 townhouses is not that small really, right? So there will be an another one. So please bear in mind that uh, <clears throat> this will create a lot of uh, traffic chaos, especially for working staff. As is, it's a, it's a trouble getting on to, to work. Now it's adding a lot more people. And then also there is a safety. Definitely there is a safety concern, especially with the little kids going to those daycares and so on and so forth. So I, I really appreciate if you could look into these aspects and uh, see if it really makes sense. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, could you state your, okay. I guess we have your name. <laughs> Thank you. One more guy. Can I ask if anybody else wishes to speak this evening, if you could perhaps sign in um, while the other speaker is at the podium? Hello, 
and welcome. Could Good you evening. state your name for uh, the record, My name please? is uh, Arar Hansen, and I live on the 44 Danfield Court, uh, which is very close to the uh, development. Uh, I wonder if the developer will uh, have to take off all the trees, or they will kind of leave the, uh, the trees as is. Uh, this is the uh, first uh, concern. The second concern is the, uh, the whole area where I live, it's coming from the Queen and Credit View. It has one entrance only for that, uh, the whole development, which is almost maybe a thousand houses. And it's really a very annoying every morning where all those uh, school buses stops at the corners and where the traffic has to go out and in from the same entrance and the same street. That's the only entry and exit for that community. And even the, I wish the city that uh, to make more meeting every day, every year uh, to, to uh, to discuss more uh, concern for the community in, 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 the, in the same area or for the whole of Brampton, at least once a year to discuss several issues for the whole community. The safeties, the schools, the, uh, the urgence of uh, calling someone if in case uh, somebody wants to complain about uh, anything. I don't see there is a, a special number for the uh, for the public to call the city and the city will take care or to uh, uh, response uh, immediately. Okay. We Just do. Uh, like, like maybe I'll give you an example. For instance, the, uh, the garbage cans. The garbage cans the other day with the, uh, the tornadoes happened, they spread all over uh, the garbage everywhere because people tend to leave their garbage can on outside skirts of their houses. And all the uh, big wind will take them out of uh, the uh, side of their houses, okay. spreading all the garbage and the, uh, the recycling on, on all over the street. M Mr. Hansen, there is a 311 uh, that you can call. Uh, it's a 724 call center for any Brampton resident. So you can call 311. If it's a regional issue, they'll pass you over to a regional uh, staff who can create a service request to have that addressed. But any matter that is um, of an urgent or uh, even if you want to express a concern, you can call 311 at any time. We or did, you can but, email 311. Uh, we did the 311. We did call. They said call 911 if you have a concern about emergency stuff. Okay. But if you have something concerned uh, the city, uh, no. they have to take my name down and my phone number to refer it to somebody, whereas the response has to be immediate. But I can't wait. Let's say somebody uh, fall his roof down and he need uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, city response uh, to it or something. Well, always in the case of an emergency, you would call 911. If there is a life uh, safety issue, for sure you would call 911. But if it's a service request for a service in your area, whether that's garbage, whether that's um, a tree, whether that's a stray cat, uh, you can call 311 and a service re request will be generated for that. But we are here this evening to discuss the application that's before us. Uh, if you need someone to follow up with you following tonight's meeting, we'll make sure that um, we have your contact information that somebody uh, reaches out to share with you some of the access points that are available for residents. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, uh, even the garbage uh, issue there, I, I, been, I did complain many times about the garbage and those cans outside of the houses. They're supposed to be inside the houses. I don't know why the city allowing these garbage cans be, be outside. Everybody has a space inside his garages. He can stick those garbage cans inside, not outside. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And your two area councillors are here this evening. They can. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to follow up with you as well. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, seeing no further delegations, would someone like to move receipt of the delegations this evening? Councillor Bowman, all those in favor? That's carried. Do any members of council have questions of clarification only on the application? Seeing none. And at this point, we will, I will accept a motion to approve the staff report. Councillor Medeiros, all those in favor? Carried. Opposed? Seeing none. The statutory public meeting for this item has now been adjourned. We have a little bit more business to deal with this evening. You're welcome to stay and watch the show if you'd like, or I can give you a few moments to uh, leave the room. Do I need to do something? No, but we there What's that? Okay. okay. No, I think we're going to have some logistical challenges. It, it, might, that. it might be an opportunity to talk about the need for the summer meeting, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how yeah, you want to play that. I'll play that. We'll that. Perfect. That. Yep. Okay. If the uh, record could show that one of the delegations this evening left us a petition, and I'd like to submit that as part of the public record this evening. Thank you very much. All other items are in consent. We'll move to the two added items. The first one is by Councillor Pileschi. Thank it's you, a Madam discussion Ch item on Royal Cliff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I wanted to bring this forward, and I've had a, a couple meetings with staff, um, and it's with respect to the supplementary report dating back to uh, May 10th, 2017, and the conditions that were put in uh, by council uh, with council's approval. Um, from my understanding, with uh, in discussion with the applicant and with um, uh, various uh, departments at the city of Brampton, everything that um, for an OPA um, amendment has been has been submitted. So I'd like the opportunity to put forward um, a motion just with respect to um, giving a little bit of the history and then um, requesting that staff come back with uh, official plan amendment at uh, the May 30th, 2018 council meeting and it be followed by a zoning bylaw amendment on the uh, June 27th, 2018 council meeting. Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'll give members of uh, committee a few minutes to read this. I'm seeing it for the first time myself. I am going to ask staff to respond to the timelines that are outlined in this uh, motion of May 30th and then a subsequent June 20. Is it June 27th or June 25th? Oh, to, coming to council, okay. Yeah. Um, I do um, want to report to members of committee that just 
uh, earlier this evening I had a conversation with the clerk about the July 11th council meeting and uh, the August 8th I believe it is that we have in our calendars those are always somewhat discretionary in terms of whether or not there's uh, enough business to have a meeting um, my suggestion is that we have that meeting in July and so if these timelines present uh, hardship on staff to get here that um, that July the 11th may be a more appropriate or doable timeline but I'm going to ask staff to respond yes thank you madam chair uh, with respect to the sorry uh, with respect to the uh, the motion here so uh, staff it does have some concerns with respect to the uh, the June 27th date that's identified for the final recommendation report uh, first off uh, perhaps I can speak to the uh, official plan amendment uh, that uh, that is requested by by way of uh, item number seven here on this motion. So staff have been uh, planning to bring forward a, an official plan amendment uh, item for council consideration within the, the next short while. Uh, staff in particular were uh, aiming for either the, I believe it's the, the, just at the very end of May or a, a date in June to bring forward the item for, for council's consideration. And uh, so that, that request is a matter that staff uh, you know, believe is uh, reasonable and uh, appropriate and we, we believe we can accommodate that. As it relates to the recommendation report, uh, really as, uh, as we had discussed with, uh, with members of council at our workshop previously, recommendation reports are, are very different uh, than they had been prior as far as we are no longer, uh, due to the considerations relating to Bill 139, we are no longer bringing forward recommendation reports asking for approvals in principle, but rather uh, at a time when we uh, are recommending approval in full. And so associated with those recommendation reports is the, the zoning bylaw amendment itself, as well as in this case, we have a, a plan of subdivision application. So uh, it would also be then including the conditions of draft approval, which is a, a very fulsome set of uh, conditions that staff works out with all the other divisions and our legal staff uh, for uh, considerations in the subdivision agreement. So that that's just to say that there there is a, uh, a significant amount of work there that staff has to complete in advance of coming forward with a recommendation report. Uh, in speaking with uh, Councillor Pleshi, uh, I guess really some a short while ago by way of email correspondence and such, we, we did have some discussion about items that uh, were still outstanding at this point in time relating to the application as, uh, as far as the studies uh, sub that are submitted in association with the application and the status of those studies, whether they've been uh, approved in full by uh, various uh, divisions staff divisions and so there there are at this point in time uh, a number of studies that are not yet approved as i understand it from the from the communication uh, from uh, my staff member uh, so it, just maybe to provide some details for some uh, just background you know there is a uh, environmental site assessment that is not yet cleared by our, our staff there is a functional servicing report that is also not yet approved uh, there is an urban design brief and tree preservation study that is uh, not yet cleared at this point in time. Uh, as well, there is a, a record of site condition, uh, which is uh, an item that doesn't rest with uh, staff, but rather the province. And the record of site condition is a confirmation of uh, toxicity level uh, in soils and really confirmation that there is no toxic elements in the soils, uh, a critical item to be received in advance of uh, the zoning bylaw amendment. And so all, all of these studies are, are uh, critical to have uh, really approved before we come forward to committee and council with a recommendation of full approval. Uh, if, if it is that uh, committee tonight and council ask uh, direct staff to to come forward with uh, a recommendation report uh, for that June 27th council meeting staff will obviously endeavor to do so 
uh, at this point in time, I have some concerns that things might not be ready yet to uh, allow us to really comply with direction in that way. There, there are some logistical uh, elements that staff would have to contend with as well. I know that the, the planner that's assigned to, to that file is dealing with uh, a, a number of, I believe it's three board meetings, Ontario Municipal Board um, hearings in, in a short time frame in advance. So, so there's some difficulty there. Staff would have to uh, likely reassign the file to a different staff member to look at uh, pulling all that information together as well. So I'll, uh, really do, I'll, I'll leave it at that for, for now perhaps. Um, Alan, are you able to tell us what date you believe is achievable? <laughs> I'm chuckling to myself a little bit, but... Are you talking uh, to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, you know, it, it's difficult for me to answer that right, right now, just knowing that there's a number of divisions that have to provide a, a, f a full approval through to a number of documents, and the, like I'm saying, this uh, provincial approval to the record of site condition document as well. Um, you know, if all those things are received in short order, and we're really banking on that, I would say that um, you know a summertime meeting would be the request from staff for us to work towards one of those two summertime meetings that uh, that council might be considering holding. Okay, speakers on the item, Councillor Pelleschi. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I'm very sympathetic to the staff's concerns. Um, from my understanding, I've had a um, uh, meeting with um, engineering and and they're they've um, they're minutes away from signing off on the EA of one and two um, as for the provincial approval from my understanding it's uh, it's being submitted tomorrow um, but it does not uh, it, it goes without the uh, official plan um, amendment um, so I understand you know some of the some of the concerns I feel I think that uh, with the TRCA letter just coming this week and uh, some of the other clearances the region appeal dated back May uh, 7th 2018 uh, the clearance city of Brampton clearance letter dated May 2nd 2018 urban design brief city of Brampton clearance email dated May 8th 2018 I just this has uh, you have to understand that this has uh, this has a 20-year date on it. Not this direct application, but this, but a subdivision or an application nonetheless for this area. I'm not gonna get into the details of it because you've seen it many, many times here before um, at the city of Brampton. It's, it dates back over a year just on this, this alone. With respect to item number seven and, and staff's concern for the June 27th, I, I request that staff um, try and meet that deadline. But I, if, if committee would allow a little bit of grace if they needed to come back, if there was concerns to a summer meeting, I think we would be okay with that but I'm just asking you to try on the 27th. I thank you for committing to, to the May 30th, um, but I'm, I'm pleading with you as, you know, coming from Councillor Willens and I uh, meeting many times with the residents of this area, on behalf of the residents, please come back on the June 27th meeting. Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Medeiros. Uh, for the Chair, not, not directly related to this application, but by going through this type of process, because I could tell you, I think all of us in terms of our wards have applications that people are coming to us regarding, you know, the timeliness of it, the impacts. So when, when this type of motion comes forth, do you take people off other files? Is it like hands on deck? That's something I, I'm just finding what this opens up is that each councillor presents their motions on respective applications in their respective areas. And I have a tertiary plan that's waiting uh, for approval, Queen Street and Mississauga, uh, Credit View, Chincuzzi, and I know you're fully aware of this, but I've just, I just feel if we go through this route, this ends up setting precedents that uh, basically we come with motions for our planning applications, but do we have the capacity to deal with this? 
through the chair. Uh, clearly, right now, um, coming into a period where we've got a number of appeals before the OMB, it, it is a bit of an all hands on deck environment at the moment. So, we would have to redirect resources so that the planner on this file could continue to focus on those OMB matters which really have dropped dead dates. So, the short answer is uh, you're correct that we would have to uh, reallocate some other resources to, to work on this file. And I, and I guess through the chair, this is. Uh I'm not sure how applications are done, if it's by equity, if it's by you look at all the wards and what the necessities are. It's just I'm, I'm concerned, again, I've seen other processes similar where applications have gone through in a timely manner and then after I'm dealing with investments in my area that I don't seem to be in, in. So it's just a concern for me that we go this route and I respect, you know, Councillor uh, Pileshi's motion because he's doing what's best for his area, but I just think for our respective areas, and me and Councillor Bowman are dealing with specific applications that if staff don't have that capacity at this time, then it becomes an issue. So um, I, just, I just find that for us to come here with, you know, give attention to one application and, and respect to other ones, if it's something that involves the whole city and there's, there's a city of Brampton interest and it's a city-wide interest, I can understand. Uh, but I have some concerns when we're dealing with ward-specific applications. Thank you. Councillor Willens. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, all due respect to Councillor Madeos. Well, those applications you mentioned have pretty much just come forward in the last number of years. Uh, We've been dealing with this up in there long before, uh, probably 25 years. I remember when this application first came. So it's been a long time issue. So I, I, I appreciate Councillor uh, Councillor. Pileshi bringing this forward, but I'm also sympathetic to staff as well. If they can try and get it for the 27th, that would be great. But if it has to push to a summer meeting, I'm okay too. We had 2,500 people came out to a meeting, so. Yeah. In the park. Thank you. Councillor Bowman. <coughs> Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, with regards to the motion, um, Staff is, you, you've already sort of committed to coming back either the 27th or the or July 11th. So, so sorry, Councillor. So, no, staff has not uh, committed to coming back with a f full recommendation report to June 27th. Uh, rather, uh, staff has to date been already going through the uh, the paces towards being able to bring uh, the, the earlier report uh, through to committee. So not a full recommendation report, but an official plan amendment, which really would be the precursor to the uh, the full recommendation report that would come to a different meeting. So staff has been targeting the, the May 30th, I believe it was, or the first meeting in June for that official plan amendment. That's what we have been doing to date. And the uh, we had not turned our attention to the uh, bringing forward a, uh, a full recommendation report through to June to this at this point in time but you know, what, what I offered earlier as far as staff endeavoring to, to do that uh, if that is the direction from uh, committee and council that we, we would do that okay and the the two councillors are both fine with it coming in July first meeting in July 11th we're asking for June 27th but if it comes in July we're giving you a, we're giving you a grace Okay, so, okay, it is it is possible even if it's the summer meeting, July 11th, that does give you more time. So through you, Madam Chair, so it, it, staff can't confirm at this point in time really what will be in a position to do exactly, you know, for that meeting, given that the various clearances and approvals aren't yet with us, and there's various matters that do have to come together to allow us to do that. Uh, again, we could endeavor to bring forward a report through to one of those timelines as directed by council. Okay, and through you, Madam Chair, Mr. Clerk, the July 11th meeting is set, or is it still temporary? Through you, Madam Chair, it is set. It's identified in the calendar as, as tentative, but it is in the members' calendar. Okay. So okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Perhaps maybe we can ask the clerk to help us. Because I think what we're hearing is the council members would be fine if it came in, in the summer. However, staff can't bring it forward until they get all the reports. It's just simple as that. If they don't have the reports, they can't bring it forward. So the number seven directs them to bring it forward on the 
June 27th. Maybe I can ask the clerk to help us reword that so that staff are directed to bring it back at the most appropriate, most speedy, uh, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm lost for what kind of words we put in there, but something that gets it as soon as they have the reports in, as soon as they can get it for, to us. I'm sure they're going to do that anyway. Staff. Looking for some help here, Peter, if I can. There's the proposed amendment there. Um, so it's, it's best efforts. It's not an attempt to. It's not giving. You ever try the best, that, right? That, read that right. That would just give staff direction to do their best to bring it back at June 27th if they have the final reports and all that kind of stuff. Would staff be okay with that? If they don't, they don't. I mean, it's simple as that. They can't bring it forward. If yeah, and I was going to suggest that, Councillor Gibson, the rec proposed recommendation needs to be provided that all studies and reports have been properly um, analyzed and, and staff are able to respond to it. And quite frankly, I, while I have, some, I have a great deal of sympathy for the area councillors, this is a file that has a long history on it. But I also think that we have a responsibility to do things right and that staff do deserve the opportunity not to rush through this if um, and and bring something because they've been directed to rather than knowing that they've got the confidence that it was done. Um, I, I I personally would prefer to see July, that we schedule for consideration at June 27th, July 11th, or August 18th. If I can't restore the floor, Madam Chair, even if they don't have it at August 18th, they can't bring it forward if they don't have all the, the, the reports. So. It's really up to, and as staff have told us, one of them is out of their control. I mean, if one of them is out of their control, it's out of their control. So I, I don't know how, I think we just need a motion that directs them to bring it back as soon as they've got all those, as you said, as soon as they've got all those in and, and done the appropriate work, bring it forward as soon as possible. It's, can I ask one more question? Is, is one of the things you're waiting for from the applicant? That they have to do the due do, do diligence and work, or is it? At this point in time, we, we can't confirm. Staff isn't able to confirm right now if there are any action items that are with the applicants right now. Okay, because that's important too. I'm sure the applicant's pushing for this and wants it to go forward. But okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Councillor Pelleschi has asked that um, the applicant speak this evening. If I would require to two thirds to reopen the agenda to add. A delegation. If you're moving that, Councillor Pelleschi. All those in favor of adding? One, two, th tell me what two thirds is. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Just to add the delegation. Uh, that's carried. That's to reopen the agenda? Do I have to call another one to add it or they did it all in one? Okay. Welcome. If you could state your name for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Richard Domes from Canyon Walker Domes, LTD. Um, I guess just for clarity, um, because there's been a lot of discussion on, on the reports and whether or not they've been submitted and cleared. Um, Madam Chair, if I may. Just with respect. Uh, Richard, please keep in mind that the planner is not here. Um, and then you have his, the upper tiers, I guess, the directors and commissioners and stuff. So Matt is not present. So it may still be at that level, and if you can just provide clarity on with respect to what has been stated yet so far. Absolutely. So it, it, uh, a lot has happened over the course of the last two weeks in terms of sign-offs um, for the uh, conditions leading up to draft plan approval. Um, Councillor Pelleschi had noted that there was the supplementary staff report that was um, approved by um, committee that required three things to happen prior to being able to get draft plan approval, which was a condition of the original rezoning and official plan amendment back in 2016. That was a council decision as well. Those three things were the that prior to draft plan approval of phase one ESA and phase two ESA, ESA be approved by the city. Um, number four was that a functional servicing report be revised to the satisfaction of the city. 
And number five was that an urban design be revised uh, to the satisfaction of the city as well. Those were the three conditions to get my client to the point where they could get draft plan approval. The rest of the items in that report were uh, suggestions for conditions of draft plan approval, which would happen following draft plan approval. So what I can advise is that in the last two weeks, there's been a number of clearances that have been provided on those, all those various reports uh, from the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, the Region Appeal, and city engineering staff on the FSR. So as far as we're considered, between May 2nd and May 14th, those three divisions and agencies have cleared the functional servicing report. I understand also in terms of the ESAs uh, that they have been cleared or are on the midst of being cleared by city staff as well. Uh, in terms of the urban design brief, we've got verification through email uh, within the last week that the urban design brief is now cleared uh, and no further comments or questions have been posed by staff on that. So that has been not signed, but it's been signed off. No further changes are required. So those are the three things that needed to get us to draft plan approval. They've been submitted. They've been cleared by the agencies and city staff. Um, and acknowledging they've come in very recently, but they are with uh, they, those clearances are with city staff now, which paves the way for draft plan approval. So I guess to answer the question, as the applicant, all the studies and everything has been submitted. The status of them is not necessarily in your court, but you have submitted the studies. The studies have been submitted, absolutely. Okay. Does anybody have any questions of the applicant? Alan? I was just going to offer up that, uh, that while Mr. Domes is identifying studies as it relates to the draft approval of the subdivision, there, there is some further consideration to uh, items that would be associated just in advance of zoning the site as well. And so uh, with respect to the, the record of site condition that the province is looking at, that, that's a matter that really we would have to have in hand in advance of uh, bringing forward that recommendation report, which would zone the property uh, as well. Councillor Dillon? Will it also, is it the same thing if you can take it under, rather than have a motion, just to take it under advisement to work as fastly, as, as quickly as possible? Will it, it accomplish the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, so through you, Madam Chair. So if, if Council is providing direction through to staff to really uh, accomplish that, uh, uh, approval as quickly as possible. Th there is difference between it and really just uh, you know, some discussion with uh, with an individual you know, or a single counselor and such about uh, bringing forward a matter uh, and a request to bring forward a matter with, with a certain level of timing. I don't understand what you just said. So that, that's just to say that if, if there is direction from all of council, there is some difference between it and, and some request from a counselor. Uh, a, um, a motion would have less discretion on the part of staff. No, I understand that. I'm just taking into account some of the uh, the words that uh, Councilor Medeiros has mentioned, uh, uh, precedent setting, and uh, is saying make the best efforts. Um, but I'm under the assumption you're already making your best effort. That's my assumption. So to, to respond through you, Madam Chair, so best efforts uh, as directed by council, you know, staff will undertake those best efforts with some uh, shifting of priorities, you know, to pr put additional priority onto that item in particular. So that could be different than a discussion with a single counselor where there is a request for us to do what we can to expedite. We would uh, endeavor to do that as well, but uh, prioritization might be shifting or might not be the same as if we had direction from all of council where we're not then shifting our priorities to the greatest or to the same degree because uh, there, there might be some right. other sensitive matters. I understand that. Thank you. Councillor Palashi. So, Madam Chair, I'm okay with uh, what's on the board now, provided that um, the OPA comes May 30th, and then the, uh, with respect to some of the concerns raised by staff, that the current, this current motion um, sets out the, some of the timelines uh, for upcoming meetings. Okay. So through you, Madam Chair. Oh my God. I'll just speak up. 
Not Sorry. Yeah. It's not turned on. I don't think it's plugged in. It's wireless. <laughs> it's wireless. I get the kids mic. <laughs> Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. So I, I think what Councillor Pawashi is moving then is uh, what's on the screen is a replacement to number seven, which is in his motion. And um, it is not committing the city to anything. It's just best efforts because we're kind of operating in a bit of a vacuum here. We're dealing with an item for which there's no information because we didn't, no one anticipated this item was going to be on the agenda. Okay. Councillor Maduro, do you have a question? Yeah, just clarification. So. Regarding this motion, essentially, again, to reemphasize, you're going to have to prioritize this as best efforts, and that would imply that other applications that staff are assigned to, that would impact their workload. So my understanding, what I'm trying to understand is, is there essentially a queue of applications based on capacity? Staff work accordingly based on the time list when applications came in. What this essentially does is impact other applications to put staff as resources on this motion. Is that my understanding? Through the chair, that would be correct. We would work to identify appropriate resources that could take care of this file and then carry it through to the uh, proposed dates uh, if and when we're ready. Okay, and, and at this stage through the chair, we wouldn't know what applications are being uh, impacted. So if I wanted to get a list of all the applications I have in Ward 3 and 4 that are being impacted as a result, um, we wouldn't at this stage know. And this is information would we be able to have after? Through the chair, that would be uh, quite an undertaking to look at which applications. I think we would have to go back and look at our staff resources, mm -hmm. figure out which applications um, uh, could afford to have a planner reassigned for the duration. I have to understand the work effort that's required. Um, but uh, I, I think it's, it's something that would be very difficult to pin down yeah. which applications would then be put uh, somewhere else in the queue. Okay, and, and through the chair, I guess then I, I understand that aspect, but essentially there would have to be some application that won't get the merit, the due attention due to this motion that you're gonna have to pull resources. Yeah, yeah, through, through the chair, we of course would wanna minimize that. And uh, obviously some applications have a different degree of readiness to move sure. forward. And not everything is within the hands of the planning staff. Uh, some things okay. are, are out uh, in the hands of the applicant or they're at certain points in the process in circulation. So we would take that under consideration when we were to try to find resources to make something a priority. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. I guess I, I maybe see this a little bit different than the commissioner. Best efforts to me is what staff and we all should be doing all the time. So it doesn't mean that you take resources off something else to do something else. If you're going to take resources off, maybe what we should do is take resources off another file that Gangnon Walker Domes has and put it to this one. <laughs> but I understand what the other I understand what the other counselors are saying. We don't none of us want our, the applications in our ward to be installed. But best efforts to me is just do your best. And as these reports come in, do your best to get them through. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to support this, but I'm not suggesting you take a planner off another file to make this one go any faster. I'm just suggesting once you get all this stuff in, you can't come forward until you do make your best efforts to get it here. We all know we're having problems. No fault of staff. We all know we're having problems getting applications forward. We all know that. Let's just throw the alpha in the room and say that's the problem we're having right now in our planning department. No fault of the staff. It's just reality, and we're trying to fix that. So let's just get along with it. Thank you. Dil Councillor Dillon. Because um, I, I think there is a, um, when, when I'm looking, reading, at, reading this uh, uh, recommendation, and I'm hearing what uh, staff is saying, I don't think this really, uh, reflects what staff is saying uh, because I think if you want to be a little bit more specific um, I think you'd have to say uh, the staff be requested to make best efforts uh, and include the fact that uh, they'll have to uh, bring more resources uh, in order to accomplish this I think uh, uh, for the benefit of, of, of our residents who are perhaps interested in this or, or reading this, uh, it might make it a little bit more clearer. 
Uh, so perhaps, uh, Councilor Pulashi, if you want to uh, add that in, uh, I think it might be more appropriate. Because bef best efforts right now, to me, is gender is a very vague. Uh, it is very vague, but uh, uh, staff has given a more specific uh, response that they're going to be have uh, have to. Uh, it's going to require more resources and more work to be done. I'll add that as an amendment because I think it uh, it makes it much more clearer. So, as a suggestion that staff be requested to make best efforts within the existing allocated resources, which doesn't I'm trying to look for some words that doesn't mean without reallocating resources. I think that's what you said. Well, I'd say including uh, any. Uh, additional resources required to, uh, in order to provide the recommendation. Well, I, I think what I heard staff say what was I'm, that they weren't wouldn't be adding resources; they would reallocate. Or reallocate resources. resources. I think just for just uh, uh, again, just to just to make this clearer, uh, just so everybody knows exactly what's going to be going on. I think that might be best uh, to add that in. Best efforts. Uh, and or including uh, allocation of any uh, resources. Through you, Madam Chair, I think then the intent would be that staff be requested to make best efforts, including reallocation of additional resources as appropriate, to provide a final report. Yes, sir. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? So it would be that staff be requested to make best efforts, including reallocation of additional resources as appropriate, to provide a final recommendation report, and it goes on from there. Fair. That's good. Okay. The commissioner wants to respond to that. Through the chair, we won't be securing additional resources. We'll be using the resources we have today. Uh, it would be very difficult to find a planner to come in to work on one file. So what we would do is look at um, the workload that we've got and assign additional capacity to, to make this a priority. Councillor Pileschi, uh, Councillor Dillon still has the floor. So um, to, to Mr. Elliott, I think um, for myself, I think that makes it a little bit uh, um, clearer as to what you guys will be doing. If you want, I guess if there's more tinkering of the wordage, uh, I think that's possible. But um, if if you're going to be allocating resources within planning to ensure that this moves quicker, uh, I think that 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 wording is appropriate. Correct. So I guess it depends on whether you're looking for a motion that you want to support or a motion that you don't want to support. So <laughs> depends on the wording. If, if you're saying to add resources, including no. adding resources, then... I, I'm simply speaking on exactly what staff is doing. In, in I think this motion, uh, to be more clear, uh, should, and if staff is going to be uh, using more resources within planning and taking staff away or allocating, reallocating, I think that wordage is, is appropriate. Because that's essentially what uh, they've stated that they're going to be doing. Just to strengthen um, the, the, the best efforts portion of it. I'll let staff ponder that for a moment. I have two more speakers, Councillor Bowman and then Councillor Frattini. Okay. Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm very much in sync with what Councillor Gibson said. When I read the, um, the um, motion, it's, it's my understanding that they will be working Staff will be working on this file anyways, correct? If, if all of those things that, that Gagnon Walker Domes has mentioned come in tomorrow, staff will be working on that file between now and July 11th anyways, correct? Through you, Madam Chair. So that, that would be correct. So granted, staff would have to um, navigate the working, uh, the work that would be 
put uh, towards that file with some other matters that the uh, assigned planner is also working on, like the uh, the three board hearings that are, are with uh, with us as well. But but yes, we would be putting efforts towards that really as we can. And so, um, you know, together with that, staff will be using you know, our, our discretion as to really how best to utilize our, our resources that way. Okay. But understanding the, the nature yeah. of the request. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. That's the way I understood it. And I think that's the way Councillor Gibson understood it as well. And that's why I don't, I wouldn't support any other amendment to this because all we're asking for, in my mind, is staff to do the work that they're going to do anyways with the resources that they have. And it says best effort. And if they can't do it in the best effort, it doesn't happen. And that's the way I see this motion, that we're asking them to go ahead and do whatever work they can to the best of their abilities and to try and get it to us by a certain date to their best effort. If they can't, it doesn't happen. And that's that's the way I see this motion. I, Thank I you. Call, I'll call the motion on the amendment separately in okay. any event. Councillor Fertini. Call the question. All those in favor of calling the question. Motion tied, therefore it fails. Because um, I have, no, I didn't vote because I have, I'd like to make a comment. And if you call the question, I don't. Huh? All those in favor of calling the question? One, two, three, four. So, so Councillor Dillon, you're next. Nice try, Councillor Fertini. So just to just to uh, to Councillor Bowman, I think uh, from my interpretation of what uh, staff, to the chair, uh, what staff had uh, indicated is that they're going to be um, moving a little bit quicker than they would have, and so just to better define what best efforts uh, actually meant, uh, is which is why I thought the amendment was uh, appropriate, just to let uh, to give people an understanding of exact, exactly what uh, what they're going to be doing. Uh, in terms of what their best effort is. That's just some clarification. Um, I think we have motions like this before us because there's some level of frustration when a file that's been around as long as this one has um, doesn't seem to um, find its way forward at the pace that um, everybody would like it to. I have a concern because I think what I'm hearing is that all the studies are in and that the applicant and the area counselors need some assurance that the file is going to keep moving forward. That if one of the parties or there is some information that um, is, uh, is required, that the file doesn't get pushed aside, that there's a concerted effort on the part of the planner to seek out the information so they can bring closure to it and bring uh, to the to the matter that uh, might be outstanding in some of the reports or the studies that have been submitted because I think that this is a reflection of um, some frustration more than anything I guess as a chair of planning um, I, I have some sympathy for that because I get a lot of those calls and Councillor Medeiros is quite right those files really are spread across the city and we're doing a better job and even as we're doing a better job the rules of engagement have changed and now the process that staff have to go through to prepare the recommendation report is becoming far more cumbersome than it used to be because they can't bring forward a recommendation report that says in principle subject to a whole bunch of conditions there's no more in principle so things have to be as final as things are going to be before the report comes forward and that takes more time I do feel that passing this motion tonight will set a precedence so that everybody sitting out there that's frustrated on a file is going to bring it forward through their area counselor, whether that's Councillor Medeiros or Councillor Fertini or Councillor Gibson and I. That's the concern I have. But I also don't disagree that this file has been hanging out there for at least 12 years that I've been on, you know, of, of my time on council. Um, and it is time to close this file once and for all. So I, I think staff have heard 
that tonight, that it's, it's got to move forward. It's got to be closed. There's no setting the file aside. It's all hands on deck um, to, to get it closed within what's humanly reasonable and achievable by that planner. But I personally just cannot sit here and support a motion when I hear staff saying that they may have to reallocate some resources to get it done because I see this happening more and more and more in the future right across the city as staff try to keep pace with what the expectations are for getting the report to council or to committee when it's not achievable um, given the more onerous uh, um, exercise that you have to go through to do that. So I'm going to call a motion. Councillor Fertini. Uh, clear question. When was this file uh, brought forward? This actually one here because before my understanding was over to a high rise and then This has a very long history. It yeah, goes yeah, back to this 206. Is a new file. This new file I'm talking about. Uh, I remember it was, I was here. confirm when it was received but I'm gonna it, it's been a, perhaps at this point in time a couple of years a couple of years okay well you know and I appreciate staff what they're doing I got the Hyatt Hotel I got National Trust uh, coming over there I got TAC I got concert it's been almost two years too and we don't bring motions forward and I've been pushing pushing so I don't want those projects also hold it up over this so I got to uh, I gotta say what Councilor Madero is saying. You know, we all have projects, and I do feel sorry for, for this. I know, and I understand this has been going on for a long time, doing the, to the high rise, uh, and then it went over to the back to these houses, and this, uh, the residents were in favor, which I'm glad we, they all sorted out. But I think uh, I don't want anything stopped towards to help any of my applications out because I got people calling me in my area too. Thank you. So there's an amendment moved by Councillor D G Dillon that it in the language include reallocation or additional resources as appropriate or add additional resources be devoted to multiple choice. Okay. So it's just the language we can, which one do would you like to move? Pick a motion. Uh, of additional resources as appropriate. Yeah. Uh, I think the second one might be a little bit appropriate. Oh, no, sorry. The sec first one is. The second one, no. The first one as appropriate. Uh, that's that's more appropriate. Okay. This, no, the, not the, first, the second one. Just the first one. No, the, the second part's coming off. Yeah. So the, the amendment moved by Councillor Dillon to the motion is that the motion be amended to Councillor Fertini, Councillor Bowman, that the motion be amended to add the wording to the end of the line of line one. In, where are you going? Including reallocation of additional resources as appropriate. That is a proposed amendment to the motion. Everybody understand? All those in favor? Motion fails. We'll go back to the motion as it's been friendly amended by the mover. That staff be requested to make best efforts to provide a final recommendation report and corresponding zoning bylaw amendment for the Royal Cliff Development Incorporated application proposing 110 a townhouse units, four semi detached units, and a public road network for consideration at the June 27th meeting of council or the July 11th meeting in the alternative if necessary. Recorded votes been requested on the new number seven as presented on the screen. All in favor, please stand to be counted. <laughs> Showing in favor is Councillor Gibson, Councillor Willens, Councillor Pileshi, and Councillor Bowman. All opposed, please stand to be counted. <laughs> Showing opposed is Councillor Fortini, Councillor Medeiros, Chair Moore, Councillor Dillon. <laughs> Madam Chair, that motion loses on a tie vote, four to four. Okay. So the motion loses. So what's still before committee are, is parts one to six. This was just a, a vote, as I understood, on number seven. Okay. 
on one to six. All those in favor? Well, it says that the uh, final recommendation report and corresponding official plan amendment um, come forward at the May 30th, 2018 council meeting. And staff said, Councillor Gibson. I was just going to staff if they're okay with that portion, up to that portion. So through you, Madam Chair. So staff uh, is, that that item is less concerning to staff as far as coming forward with an official plan amendment to the May 30th. Uh, it will entail uh, staff working on, I guess, in internal measures uh, that are not the, the norm as far as deadlines and such internally. Uh, but uh, it is an item that uh, we do believe is uh, not going to require uh, nearly uh, as much uh, the jockeying of uh, resources to comply. Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Pelleschi. All those in favor? That carries. Councillor Gibson. You are up, item 9.2. Thank you, Madam, Mayor, Madam, Madam, Mayor. Madam. Madam Chair. Um, I added this to the, I, I spoke to the Commissioner and Director today, well, we both spoke to the Commissioner and Director today about 164 and 166 Main Street North. It's a property that had the uh, facade improvement plan on it and the time has, I understand the time has expired on it. And also, we know that there's some bylaw enforcement issues on the property, so I'd like to uh, move a motion. I have it here, moved by myself, that staff report back on the facade improvement timelines and any outstanding bylaw infractions of 164 and 166 Main Street North. So just to report back, staff. The commissioner and director knew that we were bringing it. Up. I think it was a, the building improvement grant as opposed to the facade improvement. The staff clear it. Members of the committee. It's the staff report back on the, I believe it was building improvement grant, not the facade improvement grant. Through the chair, in fact, they were eligible for both programs. They were eligible for both, but they were granted the building improvement, were they not? I believe it was both. Oh, it was both. For, yes, so correct. we'll just amend this, Councillor Gibson, to say that they report back on the building and facade improvement timelines and any outstanding bylaw infractions of 164 and 166 Main Street North. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, there's no items on the referred matters list, no deferred matters, no notice of motion, correspondence, Councillor question period. Are there any questions from members of committee? Seeing none. Are there any questions from members of the public? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Willens, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. <laughs>